Welcome back to the week of Skyfire that then skipped six days to be finally continued on the last day of the next week. Yeah, I think I finally nailed the name of this week. Or last week. Look, what do you know? This video series finally has the perfect name and I will hear no arguments to the contrary. So Wednesday's Shockwave review was a thing? I figured out what happened, by the way. For those who don't know, there was a horrible glitch in Wednesday's video that caused it to stop running about 60% of the way through. By the by, you guys found that hilarious for some reason. I received literally over 200 comments about the glitch and people are now bringing it up in other videos as well. Who knew that Blind Luck had such comedic timing? Anyways, what happened is that when I rendered out the video, I did an error watch to make sure that nothing was wrong with it. But I decided I wanted to change the sound effect for the explosion in the Spider-Man skit. Did that, then I re-rendered the vid and played it back to check that nothing went wrong. Because sometimes when you're re-editing, you can accidentally screw things up. But I just did my error pass and all I changed was one sound effect. So I didn't watch the whole thing a second time through. I launched it, looked at the time code and clicked around in the timeline. Time code was right and none of the audio had become desynced, so I thought it was fine. Turns out that had I watched the video all the way through, I would have discovered that at 547, something happens to the video that causes the player to crash. And to be clear, if I skipped to 548, that doesn't happen. I literally needed to watch that specific second to crash the player. Since I didn't, I didn't notice there was a problem. Then when I uploaded to YouTube, the damn website sucked up the video like nothing was wrong. It never warned me that there were any errors. Instead, when it got to the part that would make the video crash, which was not the part of the video I changed, mind you, it just cut off the upload and treated it as normal. No error, no message, no nothing. Just acted like everything was fine. So that's how that happened. I won't be taking that video down. People really seem to like the error for some reason, and I'm not about to wipe out hundreds of comments you all made just because it's embarrassing for me. Also, by very near unanimous vote in the previous video, it looks like I will be sticking to my guns and opening a Discord at 5,000 subscribers. I honestly expected it to be more of a competition between the two options, but it was too unequal to even call one-sided. If you're not already subscribed, please consider it. But I've wasted enough of your times before this video with a long-winded speech that has nothing to do with what you want to see. Welcome to What's the Best. What's the Best Skyfire? that I own. Yeah, so last week, you guys saw all the Skyfires that I have. Sadly, there will be no surprise entries, no figures you weren't expecting, just the three you saw, and we're going to be doing this just like how unintentionally happened last week, in order of scale. So, thrilling 30 Jetfire. And hey, the return of the big figure setup. Sure, this guy isn't big enough to warrant it himself, but there will be others who do in this video, and I'm not about to go changing the setups for one figure. So, welcome back to the infinite white void. You know, I think I was kind of too harsh on this figure last time. Don't get me wrong, I stand by every ounce of criticism I gave this thing. I don't think I was wrong about any negative point I said. But at the same time, I do think that I failed to give enough focus on what's good about this thing. And what's good about it is the look. Say what you want about the build, I know I have. Say what you want about the articulation, and the materials, and how it looks very little like the character it's supposed to be, and none of that diminishes the fact that this thing looks damn cool. The sleek lines, the superhero proportions, and that red Christmas chrome. A lot of people in the comments professed a profound hatred of his crimson plastic accoutrement. But what I can tell you is that my stupid ass lizard brain loves staring into this. It makes me so happy. So for me, this stuff is nothing but a plus. Take all that away though, and you are still left with a super cool looking Japanese-esque mech. Honestly, if you want to buy this only because of how it looks, I can't blame you. I mean, I know I did. It may not be anywhere near even an acceptable representation of the character anymore in the face of what has come out since, but that's honestly part of its charm. It's its own thing, and with the mask on, it can pass for an entirely new character who just happens to have similarities with Skyfire. Take the mask off, and you lose that, for a face that looks like it was caved in by a devastating punch. I mean, yeah, it looks more like Skyfire, but are you really going to give up that cool robot face for Smash Mouth here? All-Star wasn't even that good. But yeah, outside of the look of this figure, there isn't much to want this for. It poses like actual trash by even Combiner War standards. It's got no waist articulation, and it doesn't even have tilt, though I do suppose that was at least a modern occurrence. And none of the joints have enough more range than normal to make any of that worth it. Transformation is at least decent, though. And the alt mode is... A jet. I seem to have made a mistake when telling people that it was a mix of a Raptor and an F-15, as I was informed that this actually looks more like an F-14. I've failed you all. I must go into exile. But yes, good jet, plenty of robot kibble on the underside, but it's broken up nicely. Siege Skyfire. What can I say about this that I didn't last time? This knocks the look of the character out of the park without being G1 accurate to a fault. The only place I wish this looked a little more accurate to the show is in the head, because while it's got all the correct features, it's just a little too much like the terrible Netflix show model. And I know the show model was actually based on this instead of the other way around, but nonetheless, this face ended up tainted. Posability is a very high-end War for Cybertron figure, where nothing is special, but almost everything is better than normal. I missed the fact last time that you can actually force this little panel his head sits on in for the ability to look down. And, well, I said missed, more like somehow didn't realize was possible. Thanks to Cringe Kimson. Transformation is great and fast, with the only part of it I don't like being how much effort it is to unpeg the backpack from the thrusters. And the alt mode is near perfect, with a kibbly underside. Moving on to the fans' toys Phoenix, and yeah, that's an accurate robot mode. Though, looking at the head now, and I think the helmet is a little off. And technically, it has a lot of mobility in its joints, it's just, maybe, too much. Transformation is actually really fun, which is surprising for a fans' toys figure since their engineering has a reputation for really bad transformations. But this is the one time they seem to have really nailed that aspect. 
Some of the force required to unpeg this is unpleasant, plus there are pointless steps, but it's still an enjoyable process. And the alt mode is another fantastic one, with a kibbly underside. So, what's the best? The worst is obviously the Generation Skyfire. Sure, it has a cool style, but that's because it doesn't actually look like the character it's supposed to be representing, so it gets low marks on accuracy even if you argue that it's supposed to represent a Valkyrie. Posability was pretty much bad for the time too, and while the transformation is pretty good, it's still the least good of the three by a pretty wide margin. The alt mode is accurate to a Valkyrie, and that's about all this has that's competitive with the others. Accuracy in one mode that's not even accuracy to the thing that it's supposed to be. Now for 1 and 2. If you notice, I was rushing like a madman to get through talking about these individual figures. That's because I needed to get to this part. This is where the real meat and potatoes of this video is going to be, because these two figures are in a slugging match like nothing I've ever covered before for the number 1 slot. Let's talk accuracy. Both of these figures are incredibly accurate to the G1 design of Skyfire, where one kind of takes accuracy to a fault. The fans toys is so slavishly accurate his surfaces end up kind of boring, contrasted with the Siege version, who conversely might be a little too busy. While I think this looks cool on the Siege figure, like really, really, really cool, it's also an extreme departure. There is, I think, a happy middle ground between these two. It's hard to determine which one of these has the more accurate proportions. On the fan's toy's end, the arms are disproportionate while the legs are too long, whereas the Siege is much better in those regards, but his torso is swollen and his backpack is too big. Lastly, the heads. I think the fan's toy's has the more accurate helmet, even if it's a little off, and it has the way better eyes with its special chromed light piping that you are better off not using, especially since the plastic on the head seems to be a bit thin and light goes right through it. Contrast that with the Siege, whose eyes are dead and whose helmet is much further off, but who I find had a much better face. It has all the correct details and manages to not make the figure look like a human in a boxy suit, even if it does look a little too evil. I think I'm going to have to give the edge to the fans toys in the looks department. I personally like the Siege a lot more in this regard, but there is no denying that the fans toys has the more accurate appearance, and this category is accuracy to the classic interpretation. It takes proportion and sculpt, with I think the Siege only winning on the face sculpt. Posability between these two is complicated. In theory, the fans toy should win because its joints tend to have more range, though not always, and it's got these hands. The problem lies in the fact that the build on the fans toys is so garbage that a lot of the joints are made useless. His arms can barely hold themselves up, his legs can't hold themselves up, and then he's just missing some basic stuff like waist rotation. Contrasted with the Siege, who yes, tends to have less range in most joints, but all the stuff he does have is solid like a rock, and who I'm not worried is just going to fall over because his legs give out. Plus, he actually has the ability to look down and has waist rotation. So, like half the posability on fans toys is useless because the figure has its arms tied behind its back with a terrible build, meaning that the Siege pulls ahead in this category to win it. But if your Phoenix has a sturdier build than mine, then it would win. Though, the lack of a waist still drags it down a bunch, and the inability to look down is silly when the Siege can pull that off, so it's a bit closer than you might expect. Accessories are not something I usually cover in a What's the Best, but that's because it's usually not such a blowout. The fans toys comes with a gun, a separate chest plate so you can have a different faction sticker on it, and a set of unchromed light piping eyes. And gross, no! Why would anyone want that? The Siege comes with a mountain of cool crap. From his armor upgrade, to his cool missiles, to his blast effects, to the buckler cannons I didn't realize could separate into regular shields, and kind of silly double guns, though it takes an immense amount of force to get these apart. Thanks again to Cringe Kimson, cause I would never have figured this out without being told. And then you have his gun, and even if we were kneecapping the Siege by limiting this to only comparing the guns, the Siege still comes out way ahead. Yes, his gun is less accurate, but the Fanstoy's gun is just his gun, and that's it. And while it's not cheaply made, it's sure not quality. On the other hand, the Siege's gun may be inaccurate, but it's close enough that it's capturing the spirit of the weapon. The build on it is way nicer, and it splits into two rifles with fold-out handles. I mean, this accessory on its own is so much nicer, it's kind of unfair to compare the two. So yeah, this is a complete and total slaughter on the accessories. Transformation on both is great and shockingly similar. The Siege is simpler and significantly faster, letting you get between both modes before the process wears out its welcome. It's very satisfying, though I do find the hands to be a bit meh on it. I love this process, and I find myself constantly flipping between modes just for the fun of it. Like I said, the fans toys is very similar, but with a more premium twist to it. Some aspects of this are more satisfying than the Siege's version of them, though there are much worse things about it, like how the arms collapse and the leg locks require so much force as to become unpleasant, and there are just pointless parts you don't need to do to get a finished alt mode. I'd say this category is pretty much a wash, with an edge going for the Siege. Unlike the fans toys, there aren't any superfluous steps of the transformation, and at no point am I ever worried that I'm going to break the thing, but both are pretty fun. As for the alt mode, and I think this is where I'm going to have to get a little controversial. Both are very accurate looking, both are very cool looking, but if you ask me, the single most important thing in all of Skyfire's alt mode design is the cockpit. Every other aspect of the design could suffer so long as the nose cone is correct. And in that regard, the Siege clenches it, with its much more accurate nose section. The step in the fans toys nose cone might seem like it's not a big deal, but it just harms the most iconic feature of the whole thing. 
and the Siege is doing fine in all other regards. While the backpack was oversized in robot mode, it's correct here, and the sculpting is much more subdued in this mode. So, what we are looking at is the fan's toys has the more accurate robot mode, with posing going either way depending on your build of the Phoenix. But let's be nice and just say for now that it wins on posing anyways because it does technically have more. The Siege is winning on the atypical category of accessories by a wide margin, and it's got the Edge and Transformation as well as Alt Mode. Outside of the accessories, neither figure is just dominating the other in a particular category. They are both beating each other by inches. But at the end of the day, I think the Siege is adding those inches up into feet. I'd say the aspects it's losing in are by a slimmer margin than the ones it's winning, and it's winning in more. It's close enough that I'm worried this is coming down to my personal bias, though I suppose it being this close does make the fact that the Siege is a third the price count in its favor a lot more, because you could spend three times more for not that much better. But I'm calling it. Siege Skyfire is the best. And that's not half of what I have to say, but it's enough of what I have to say. And I know, you know, what everyone else tells you to do at the end of these videos. So, if you liked what you saw here, please do that. And if you'd like to take it a step further, then please share this video with any friend you think may be interested. I hope you all enjoyed listening to me waste your time.